when I sit down to do a segment like this, sometimes I'm reading off of a teleprompter. Hopefully, what I'm saying is close to the words up there. And for folks watching with subtitles, I hope the words coming out of my mouth are the same as what's down here. Now, in a courtroom, this is pretty important because things I say can ultimately become a matter of the official record. This all happens because a stenographer like Chris is in the room perfectly capturing word after word after word coming out of my mouth. At least that's how it's supposed to work. In courtrooms across America, a good number of folks aren't exactly speaking what we might call the king's English. In this country, our courts are the great levelers. And if you don't sound like that, things could get a hell of a lot more complicated. Last year, a team of academics tested court reporters in Philadelphia on their comprehension of some African Americans in the courtroom. The results of their research showed an alarming lack of accuracy and immediately raised profound questions about citizens' access to due process. In other words, if court reporters can't understand what black folks are saying in court, these citizens can get screwed. What is the origin story of this research? One of the things that prompted us to do the study with the court reporters in the first place was looking at uh, the way that Rachel Jean Tell was treated in the George Zimmerman trial and mm -hmm. seeing the ways in which her speech was just not understood by the jury, by the judge, by the lawyers in the case. What did he say to you? No, stop playing him like that. I'm sorry. Stop him. With him like that. He, Mr. Trayvon Martin told you stop playing with him like that, like yeah. stop joking like that? Yeah. Okay. That brought us together to do this research, looking specifically at the ways in which people being misunderstood because of their dialect might affect the criminal justice system and their outcomes. The real world examples of this are too many and ridiculous. In one case, the plea for an appeal hinged entirely on the judge's confusion over the word finna. Like, I'm finna get mad because this nonsense in the courtroom is pissing me off. Of course, I had to take a look at some of the language they used to test court reporters for their study. So I have a uh, comprehension quiz here for you. It's 15 questions on the grammar of African American English, multiple choice questions. Uh, just pick the answer that best paraphrases into what we'll call like classroom English. You ready? You white dude giving me a test <laughs> on African American All right, no, no, all right, let's see. A little nervous. I'm gonna see if my black card is revoked. It always be drunk guys on the subway testing my patience. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, I see what you guys are doing here. It's a dangling modifier. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody never tell him nothing. <laughs> nobody tells him anything. That's probably because he a snitch. She don't stay. Hold on. She don't stay be talking about when he done got it. What the hell is this? <laughs> I feel like I scored at least 14 out of 15 on this. Maybe 13, all right. <laughs> so Jesse, from a sociological perspective, why is this work important? It seemed like a really obvious but important realm to look at because the way the justice system works is really reliant on what people say. Mm -hmm. If people are going through the system, and those important actors in the system are not understanding what they're saying, then it seems like a place for more inequality that hasn't even been studied yet. If you didn't grow up speaking this variety, there's two different ways that you can look at it. Either you recognize, maybe I don't understand what I'm seeing or what I'm hearing, or you can say, well, that's not right. And I think a lot of times people do the latter. They, they say, okay, that's not right, that's broken, that's wrong, that's bad. Um, there's a stigma on the language variety, but it's in part related to the history of you know, race in America. It's a stigma around black folks more than it is anything based in actual language. Is this a huge problem? We know from our study that about 33% of the sentences that were transcribed changed something about the who, what, when, where of the meaning of the sentence, which could be huge if you're talking about um, evidence, alibis, things like that. My educated guess is that it is a big problem. I guess if, if one person gets screwed, that's big enough a problem, right? Yeah. It needs to be solved. It's a question of justice and equal access to justice. As you can imagine, court reporters were none too pleased when Taylor and Jesse's findings were published 
and garnered a whole lot of press coverage. Our friend Chris here from earlier, he takes both his job and his duty to fellow citizens very seriously as a court reporter. What does the stenography community have to say about remedying situations like this? I think that it's all going to go back to training. I, I think that the study raised alerts for most of us, and I think that uh, people are going to ask to repeat more. You know, that's our job. We're going to protect the record. When you ask for clarification, are you asking for clarification on the words that they're saying or the meaning of the words? The words they're saying. If you can accurately transcribe the words, but the words mean something other than what the literal meaning is, then that's an issue. That's not an issue for us. It would be an issue for the lawyers or whomever is using that information, for example, jurors or the court. And I know that the study dove into uh, interpretations, but we generally do not interpret. And we're generally just about uh, making sure that the words are accurate. I have to say, I was a bit skeptical at the idea of white academics from the ivory tower studying how black people speak. But this project actually is not limited to white voices. You work with Taylor and Jesse on this research. I do. It kind of helps to have you on board, too, because you look, I mean, let's be real. It, you got two white folks I studying yeah, African-American and English. I, you know I what I'm saying? Part, yes. <laughs> you can have the theory, you can have the linguistics, mm -hmm. you can have the sociology, mm -hmm. but being a black man in America, you know, I have to uh, navigate these systems. When I think about this topic, right, there are judgments attached to the way people speak. Absolutely. You know, like I could code switch if I want to, but it's just exhausting and I don't feel like it. But that don't mean that don't mean that I don't know nothing. Right. And I said it, that don't mean that I don't know nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It's almost as if the folks that are getting caught up in the criminal justice system for speaking this way are being punished because they refuse to code switch or they don't or know they how can't to code switch right. or they don't know that there are codes to switch to. And do you think this research can remedy these problems? The research will describe how things are used, but then you really still have to apply it to getting the type of training for lawyers to speak to their clients, for doctors to speak to their patients, to understand that there is a difference and it is valid and, and viable. Um, you have to start there. <laughs>